and deliver apps with GitHub Actions for the Microsoft Power Platform. My name is Haley Huber, and I'm a program manager on the Power Platform team focused on the pro developer experiences. I'm joined today by Pierce Boggan. Hi, Pierce. Hey, Haley. I'm Pierce. I'm a principal program manager in developer division. And developer division, surprise, surprise, uh, makes lots of things for developers. Uh, so uh, we make things like IDEs and code editors, like Visual Studio, Visual Studio Code, and Visual Studio for Mac. We make languages and runtimes like .NET and TypeScript. And we also make various Azure services. And so I also work on developer tools for the Teams app platform. And I've been working with Haley and the Power Platform team on enabling fusion development between low and pro code developers. So before we get started, I want to hear from each of you. Uh, if you're a pro developer or work in IT, I want you to think about how often you're getting requests for applications. Uh, and if those, if those applications are outnumbering your uh, ability to actually deliver on them. And if you're not a pro developer, I want you to think about how often you've asked, why isn't there an app for this? And feel free to leave your reply in the chat if you're comfortable. And so the really interesting thing about the responses uh, to this question is that almost everyone who is a pro developer is saying, hey, we're totally slammed. And uh, most of the people who aren't pro developers are saying, I'm saying almost every day that there should be an app for this. And so when we look at the data broadly uh, across organizations, this is the case for app development almost in every single company. And so in fact, over 500 million new applications are gonna be built in the next five years, uh, which is 5X the de demand that IT departments can actually deliver on. Companies are trying to fill this gap with hiring, but it's hard to find tech talent to match this growth. So how do we reconcile this reality where uh, IT departments are getting asked to constantly build applications, uh, but they can't meet the demand? So obviously we should focus on making developers more productive and making new developers, but both of those things take time. And why we're here today is to think about another way we can approach this problem. So we can actually scale our IT app portfolios by delivering some of these applications with low code. So basically what this means is we call what we call citizen developers or non-traditional developers can build these applications or even pro developers can use low code platforms to build apps even faster. And so if we can scale out our app portfolio using low code, then we can achieve even more together. So when is a good time to build applications that are low code? So there's a common set of criteria that we talk about that helps to build a mental model for how you think about what applications could be built with low code tools. First is end users of the app. Are they internal or external? Uh, most IT departments are building a lot of internal facing applications, even at companies whose job it is to build uh, software for external consumption, like here at Microsoft. Second is scale. Uh, not every app application is going to have millions of users, and that's totally okay. Uh, those apps are totally perfect for rapid app development and low code. Third is architecture. Do I have a monolithic or microservices based architecture? And finally, latency. The, the overwhelming majority of applications don't need to actually have millisecond level responses to every single thing that happens in the application. And you'll find that there's so much more work on the developer to take those milliseconds off as we start trying to micro optimize the application, when most of the time seconds is totally fine in terms of latency. And so these are the four criteria that are really great guiding principles to evaluate apps as candidates for scaling them with low code development or rapid application development. So if you work in IT or as a pro developer, think about all the applications you built over the last year how many might fit this criteria? From looking at lots of organizations in my capacity as a PM and developer division, I can tell you that probably most apps uh, with customers that I work with would fit this criteria. So I'm gonna pass over to Haley, who's gonna tell us more about how we can actually build these low code apps once we've identified potential scenarios where it makes sense for your business. Thanks, Pierce. So what does it really mean to build a low code app or any of the other low code tools that we use? The Microsoft Power Platform, and some of you may already be familiar with this because it's been around for a few years now, but we offer four products. It's Power BI, Power Apps, Power Automate, and Power Virtual Agents. These four together are the low-code Power Platform that Microsoft offers to enable citizen developers to be able to build things that formerly only professional developers could build. And it allows the professional developers to build things so much faster without having to worry about putting together the UI from scratch, putting it together a bot from scratch. And we're gonna walk through what it really means, how to use these and how these can save you time and money every day. Uh, starting with Power BI, these, this is business analytics. So looking at graphs, analyzing your data and everything like that. Power apps is what we're gonna focus on a little bit more today, which is how do you build an app? It feels like Power 
point and Excel combined, uh, which is something pretty much everyone's familiar, familiar with at this point. So it's very easy to pick up and understand, and you can build a very quick, easy UX on top of your data. Uh, and we also have Power Automate and Power Virtual Agents. Power Automate is the robotic process automation, uh, workflow automation. We have flows so you can have if then statements without even needing to write code. And finally, Power Virtual Agents is our intel intelligent chatbots. So you can create a bot without knowing code. I know that sounds crazy. Five minutes you can create a bot, um, but I promise you it's, it's the truth. And all of these are built on top of data connectors. And so any data that you have, you can connect to. We have tons of data connectors out of the box. And if not, if we don't have something out of the box that pertains to what you're looking for, we're going to show you how to build something so you can have a custom connector to your data. Uh, we also offer portals, and so anyone can use the services that you're building, AI Builder and the Common Data Service. Uh, so AI Builder is essentially AI models and artificial intelligence that you can incorporate low code. Uh, and the, finally, the common data service is our data model where you can store your data. Uh, it's backed by Azure SQL, and so this is a great offering that pairs well with the, the Power Platform. So starting with Power Apps, looking into our low-code approach to building apps, it's super easy, and we're going to even show you how to build it inside of Teams, because now all of these capabilities are surfacing inside of Teams, so you don't even have to leave the Teams application in order to be able to build these. Uh, you can connect with all your existing data, uh, and it also comes with all of the governance and security, uh, so you don't need to build that in. It's it's part of this offering. So. There's certain things that you can do in Power Apps, but you're wondering as a pro developer, what if not everything's in here? What if I don't want to just drag and drop buttons and make it look pretty? What if there are cliffs that I can't use this, this for? We have pro developer tooling that we're going to talk about later in this presentation on how you can extend those. And so you can create and customize these apps to be everything you want and the parts that you would normally spend time on coding. You can just do it quick and easy using Power Apps. Workflow automation through Power Automate is our if-then statements, our, our flows as we call them. So we have seamless integration with all of the connectors, so you can connect to your different services. You can connect Outlook to any other service, to SharePoint. Um, out, out of the box, we have the 350 connectors, and so anything you have data in, you can connect, or even if you don't want to do a data connection, you can create workflows and robotic process automation without knowing any code. We also have Power Virtual Agents, which is our chatbot feature that's incorporated in Teams. And so I'm going to show you an example of one of these chatbots inside of Teams where you can create a bot in less than five minutes. AI Builder is truly artificial intelligence without needing to know code. And so we have several different models. You can do form processor, you can do image recognition, you can even do prediction models using AI models that we have created and you train it and within 15 minutes, you have an AI model built and ready to go. So you can add intelligence to your applications. You can add insights. You can think through the data that you have coming and predict the future that's coming without needing to know code. Um, and so it's super fast, super easy. As I mentioned, we have over 350 out of the box connectors for you to use. Uh, these are anything from, from Facebook to Twitter to, uh, to Outlook, um, to Excel, to all of your Azure services. Uh, and if there's something that you don't see here that you want, you can easily build a custom connector, uh, which we'll, we'll walk through in a minute, how you can export your, your APIs and turn them into custom connectors to be consumed by your citizen developers or yourself inside of the Power Platform. Of those out of the box connectors, 20 of them connect to Azure services. And in our demo inside of Teams, we're going to see how many of those we can easily surface just through authentication. All you need to know is how to click a box and then type in your, your user and password and you're connected to your data inside of your app. So we're going to go take a peek inside of Teams and see what this looks like. We're going to build an app. We're going to look at how you can make a flow and we're going to see an example of a virtual agent chatbot and what it does. Let's take a look at a quick example of the Power Platform inside of Microsoft Teams. Starting with Power Apps, let's see how we can build an app inside of Teams without leaving Teams and add it to a group so our users can access it. Starting, we're going to decide which team we want to add it to. We're going to add it to the Power Platform demo team. So if I hit Create, it's going to create my app inside of Teams for me to be able to edit here and then publish without even leaving this app. I'm going to name it. This is my demo Power Platform. 
and save it. And so I have a simple out of the box app here with just the one screen and it's not connected to any data here. Uh, but this looks and feels like the power apps we're used to. So I can insert all the same things, the popular items here, uh, where I can add a label or any of that. I can even add mixed reality, which is new. Um, but same old shapes, same thing everyone's used to. So looking at the data, I can add data to my app so that I can actually do things with it. As we mentioned, we have over 350 out-of-the-box connectors where you can easily, just with authentication, sign in and get access to all of your data. We also have all of our Azure connectors. And so as I share my app, everyone can see all this data that I'm sharing with them. I'm going to connect to the common data service, which is what I'm currently using inside of my Teams app. So it's just going to populate my app with the data. This is just dummy data for the, for the sake of the app, so it's just some numbers here. Uh, but you can see that it's filled out this table in my gallery, and so I can add new records to this data, and I can add a new screen or a new data if I don't want to just connect with the C, uh, CDS data. Uh, so here I can publish it into Teams, and then I have a Teams app ready to go for my team to use. I can also create Power Automate flows. So see, I don't have any flows right now, but I can create a new one. I can create from a template or from blank. So I have a bunch of cool templates down here that make it super easy. Uh, just signing in, I can do out of the box flows that they have already outlined for me. Power Virtual Agents, where I can make my bot in less than five minutes. So you, I don't even have to write any code. And this is just a quick, simple, easy way uh, to do it. So I have a fun one here just set up. Uh, that I did ahead of time. So are you enjoying this demo? They say, yes, but I'm a pro developer. What else can I do with the Power Platform aside from low code solutions? I'm glad you asked. So that was everything inside of Teams. But what if you're a pro developer and want to do more? This is the key to success is the combination. It's the fusion between the citizen developer and the professional developer, as well as the IT admins. Together, we can do more. What do you think, Pierce? I completely agree, Haley. There's this tension that I think sometimes exists when we talk about low code tools and citizen developers, this fear that pro developers have. It's really unhealthy. It's, it's not us versus them between these different types of people. We should be taking more of a growth mindset. Uh, pro developers and citizen developers, together we can achieve even more. And so rapid application development doesn't replace the need for pro developers, it enhances it. We still have a massive shortage of developers. This is all about how we can scale those app requests that we're getting in our organization to others in our org. So think about things like we're gathering requirements in the requirements gathering process and all the domain expertise you have to build when you're building an application. What if the people with that domain expertise could just build the application themselves? So there's a lot of things that we have to do as pro developers and as IT departments that we shouldn't have to do. And often these applications are gonna require pro dev integrations as well, uh, where we collaborate together. Haley's kind of referenced this throughout. Pro developers can build APIs and have those be consumable inside of the Power Platform. We can build custom controls and make those consumable inside the Power Platform. So it's not, I just have a low code app or I just have an app that I built in code. You can actually have both, uh, which is really awesome. So we're gonna be talking about these things kind of as pro developers throughout the rest of this presentation and showing uh, how we can expose them to the Power Platform to work with others so we're not stressed all the time with all the requests we're getting for applications. And citizen developers, this is gonna empower you to create the apps you've always wanted. Uh, you can take that domain expertise you have and something that I don't as a pro developer, and you, we can work across divisions and organizations to achieve more together. So we just laid out this awesome collaboration between citizen developers and professional developers and how that enables both of us to focus on the projects that we enjoy and are most impactful to our organizations. So we call these scenarios that contain both low and pro code components fusion development. We've referenced that term a lot in this presentation so far. But I wanna get really practical. What does this actually look like? What does fusion development mean? What does that look like in a particular application scenario? So all applications have fundamental building blocks. Uh, they have APIs, they have UI controls, they have data sources that are actually powering these applications. And so what we can do is we can enable fusion development by architecting our applications for maximum reuse of these code components and then exposing them to the power platform for our citizen developers to leverage. So looking at this graph, in one scenario, I may have an Azure SQL database that's backed by APIs built with Azure Functions and exposed via API management. I might then build a customer-facing e-commerce mobile application with something like Xamarin and C-sharp that leverage those APIs and data. 
But that's just kind of the, the surface level scenario. There are so many other scenarios that are directly adjacent to this one. How do I track inventory for my store? How do I handle processes like shipping? How do I respond to customers when they have questions about their orders? There's a whole bunch of scenarios that are in alignment with this pro dev application we built. And so if I can take the work I've already done, those code components that I built when I built that pro dev application, and I can bring those into the Power Platform, then that citizen developer could go and build that inventory app with Power Apps. They could build a conversational bot for taking for talking to customers with Power Virtual Agents. Uh, or we could even automate some workflows with Power Automate. So all of these scenarios would be using those same pro developer APIs that powered that native mobile application. And so that's the really cool thing here. It's likely that you already have these code components lying around. It's not that you need to go do something else. They're already there. You just need to expose them to citizen developers in the Power Platform. And so I've been referencing this term of code components. And what is code components? It's really just a fancy term that encompasses the foundational building blocks that we see in all applications. And so these are the things that I can take and expose to the Power Platform for citizen developers or even pro developers to leverage uh, so that we can scale our IT app portfolios. So data stores contain my business data. Uh, this one's kind of straightforward. There is some place, some data that we're collecting, whether it's uh, our inventory, whether it's the items in our catalog, whether it's customer actions, this data is being stored somewhere in a data store. Generally, on top of that, we have APIs. And these APIs expose data to applications and apply business logic. Uh, typically, I may take some uh, data that's actually stored in a database, and I may apply some transformation or additional business logic on top of that before I return that to my application. And finally, there's UI controls that visualize that data. So there's kind of this nice flow from data stores to APIs to UI controls, which are actually just visual containers for the data that, I'm, that I have in my APIs and data stores. And all three of these code components can be exposed to citizen developers in the Power Platform. You're already building these things. It's just a matter of wiring them up to the Power Platform, which we're going to talk about more later. So the really cool thing about the rapid application development stack at Microsoft is we have all the tools for delivering an extensible, powerful ecosystem for app development. Azure provides a platform for creating rich experiences with managed services and databases. Visual Studio and Visual Studio Code, what I've been working on my whole career, uh, provide me with the tools necessary to build, debug, and deploy these code components. GitHub, which we'll be talking about later in a demo, enables me to add source control and CI CD for enterprise grade app application lifecycle management. And wrapping this all together is the Power Platform and Power Apps, which integrates nicely with all of these components for a nice story. I love this chart because it shows just how powerful this scenario of fusion development can be. I don't have to do anything different than what I do today to leverage the Power Platform as a developer. I can continue to leverage the Azure data stores and services that feel comfortable to me, and then I can expose those to developers in the Power Platform for rapid application development. Something I'm also realizing as I talk to more and more organizations in my capacity as a PM and developer division is that APIs are really the driving force behind powering this digital transformation we're seeing across all industries right now. APIs provide that avenue for transformation. Internally, you probably already have APIs for things like HR, profile, inventory, shipping. And if you don't, you're probably planning on creating them for new business scenarios. And then externally, there are APIs now that do all kinds of awesome things, like sending SMS messages or managing marketing campaigns. And so most applications that we talk about uh, an IT department building are just a user experience that's built on top of these APIs, built for interacting with these APIs. So it's super critical that we make it easy to consume APIs in the Power Platform. And so we do that for you with hundreds of pre-built connectors like Haley talked about earlier that you can use to consume these APIs. Uh, but what about internal APIs that wouldn't already exist in that catalog? So Power Apps has a concept called connectors, which are just a way to leverage a particular API in my application. To expose APIs to citizen developers, we just need to build a custom connector to make that possible. So the, there's the connectors, which are the default uh, experiences we get in the Power Platform for connecting to external data. And then we also have custom connectors, which are just connectors uh, that are doing the exact same thing as the regular connectors, but connecting to internal APIs. So this may sound very complicated, but really, I literally promise all it is is clicking around in the Azure portal. So all we need to do is put our APIs into something called API management. And once we do that, we can easily expose all those APIs automatically to our developers in the Power Platform. So why would I put my APIs into this API, API management thing? What is this API management thing? Well, if you do it, you get a ton of awesome features. 
Uh, well, the obvious thing is it's going to provide a surface for me to manage my APIs. It's called an API management service, aptly named. Uh, I can improve my API discoverability. So if I have all my APIs that I have internally, they're in all of these random Azure uh, services distributed across your entire organization. By putting them into API management, I'm creating a catalog of APIs that people can see. Uh, I can apply management uh, for APIs that are both in the cloud, like I've been referencing, but even on-premise. Uh, we can expose on-premise APIs through API management as well. I can do things like apply authentication and authorization. I could do things like uh, apply inbound policy to filter by IP address for added security. Uh, but for performance, I can do things like uh, cache responses to reduce my API latency. So there's a lot of benefits to just putting your APIs in API management before we even get to the Power Platform. But if we put our APIs into API management, there's a literal one-click option to expose that API to the Power Platform for consumption by citizen developers. So how do we do that? Well, as a pro developer, uh, we mentioned all we need to do is put our APIs into API management, and then it's just clicking. So in the video that's playing now, uh, you can see that I'm in API management. And when I click export on my API here, I have several options of different services that I can export my API to. If I click on Power Apps and Power Automate, I'll have the option to select my Power Platform environment. And then I just pick a name that will used to be called, used to call that API in the Power Platform. That's it. Literally, that export button click and selecting the environment and picking a name for the API that will be used when people call it in the Power Platform, that's the only unique step that I need to take as a pro developer to expose this API so that people can build applications on top of it inside of the Power Platform. All of the other stuff that happened before now, putting it into Azure, exposing it to API management. Those are things I'm probably already doing as a pro developer, so they're not unique to this scenario. The only thing I need to do, which is pretty powerful to enable all those apps that we talked about, this rapid application development we talked about earlier, is literally click a button. It's that simple. Uh, and so I encourage you to give it a try because it's super easy. Uh, and of course, I can use this functionality in the new Power Apps experience in Microsoft Teams that Haley showed earlier as well. So my favorite thing is that if the application I'm building is distributed within the boundaries of Microsoft Teams itself, I can build low-code applications that leverage my APIs and API management and distribute those apps to others at no additional cost. So all of the cost there is covered within my license I already have for Microsoft Teams. So there's no cost to build a Power App that consumes pro dev APIs backed by API management when that app is distributed in Microsoft Teams. That's really powerful. So the Power Platform is the perfect vehicle for consuming these internal and external APIs and using them to build applications that really do transform the way we do business. So we've talked a lot about APIs and data sources, but what about UI controls? So the Power Platform has this thing called the Power Apps Component Framework that's gonna enable me to build custom UI for Power Apps. It's likely that your organization already has a ton of components that are used throughout your applications. I know that uh, when I worked on the Xamarin team, I would work with people frequently and they would have control libraries that they would use throughout all of their applications. And so these uh, libraries of components that your organization has likely already built, those can be brought into the Power Platform for your citizen developers to extend their Power Apps UI. Uh, I can even bring in existing React and Angular controls via NPM and expose those as controls in the Power Apps as well. So I get full access to everything in NPM. I can wrap those with the Power Apps component framework and then bring those into Power Apps. So really the UI that we can build within Power Apps itself is limitless with this pro developer extensibility. And of course, if I wanted to, I could also create custom controls from scratch for just Power Apps. And there's also an awesome complementary CLI for creating, building, and packaging these components as well. So now we have a really great app that we've built with our, our pro developer and our citizen developer working together to create this fusion experience of, a, of an app that's best for both worlds. Uh, but what do we do now? It's, it's a great app, but we want to make sure we can distribute it. We want to test it. We want to we want to deploy it to everyone who needs it. So what you need is our low code solution for CI CD pipelines. Uh, and so we've worked with GitHub in order to create a space inside of where the pro developer lives all the time anyway, some tools you're familiar with, tools you use every day inside of GitHub, but a low code solution that's easy to create these pipelines so that you can test, so that you can publish, so you can push these apps through in version and make sure that it is everything that you need it to be and you have control over the apps. Uh, so Pierce, today we're gonna walk through and see what, what is the Power App platform doing with GitHub? 
Yeah, Haley, one of the really awesome things I love about what we're doing here with Fusion Development is that these worlds of low and pro code are really being melded. So we, we talked a lot about consuming pro dev components and low code apps to scale app development. But one of my other favorite things is we can take some of the awesome things we have in, uh, as pro developers, uh, such as GitHub, and put low code twists on them as well. Uh, and so a great example of this, as you said, is this power platform integration we have with GitHub. Uh, so when you're building an app, think of building an app. It's not just the act of building the app. That's it's a little unfair to say that's the easy part, but that's kind of the straightforward part, right? Building the app itself. There's all these things that happen around the application. There's the collaboration that happens back and forth between stakeholders. You know, we file feature requests, we file bugs, we file enhancement requests. GitHub has really great project management functionality built in natively to help track these things. And so we can collaborate around them together as citizen and pro developers for a really nice fusion development story. It's also likely that as my application evolves and we add these new feature requests that people are adding, we fix bugs, we're going to want to be able to make changes to the app and we're going to want to be able to track those changes and then release new versions of our application. So this kind of iterative process is really the software development lifecycle at play. And so with the Power Platform, we can do exactly this with GitHub. I can make my changes, I can track my changes over time, and I can eventually roll a series of changes into releases. And all of this is completely traceable. So if there's ever a problem, not that I ever, when I'm coding, have problems in my application, but it happens from time to time. If there's ever a problem in testing, we can actually just roll back to a previous version, which is really awesome. That's the nice thing about having this traceability that we get with putting something into source control. And this process of tracking these changes is called continuous integration. And the process of deploying it to our users as we make these changes is known as continuous delivery. So collectively, those two things are kind of known as CICD. So you might hear me refer to that from here on out. And GitHub is really the perfect place to enable these fusion development teams. So uh, how do we actually enable this continuous integration and delivery flow that I've just talked about? So within GitHub, we talked about uh, the project management capabilities. I've kind of referenced uh, kind of workflow type things you can do within GitHub, but how do I actually do that? There's something called GitHub Actions within GitHub that we can use to do this. And so what these do enable me to do is to define my own custom software development workflow. And so these are totally customizable to meet the way that my organization likes to manage projects as they continue to evolve. So let's dive into a demo with Power Platform and GitHub Actions to see this in action. So let's look at what collaboration, source control, and continuous integration and delivery, which we refer to as CICD, looks like with the Power Platform and GitHub. Uh, so here's a power app that our team has been building to track time off requests. Uh, so I can see my current leave requests as well as the status of them, my leave balance, company holidays. Uh, but a feature request we've been frequently getting is I can filter my leave requests by pending and approval states, but not declined. And so uh, we could just edit this app in production, republish the changes, but it's likely that we're going to want to create some traceability for these changes uh, and have them be tested prior to just deploying them straight into production. And so this is really what GitHub is great about. Uh, so we're gonna use GitHub to see what it might look like to kind of work through this entire workflow from kind of requesting this feature to actually building it out with the Power Platform uh, to deploying it into production with GitHub Actions. So here we are inside of GitHub and we're looking at the repository for my time off app. And so think of a repository as just a giant folder that's gonna track all the changes that I make over time. And so you can see here within these folders, there's there can be subfolders, there can be files. And so what we can do with GitHub is we can represent our Power Platform solution as a GitHub repository. Another cool thing about GitHub is we have this concept of branches and branches are just copies of my main folder. And so, uh, Within this, I can create branches for things like my main branch, which is typically my production code. Uh, I could have a development branch. And in each of those branches, I can collect multiple changes. So say I'm working on a 1.0 release. I can put all those in a development branch, track them over time. And as it, when I'm ready to release, I can actually take all the changes in that branch, in that folder, and bring them into the main directory with something called a pull request. So we'll return to GitHub later, but right now I wanna show what it'd look like to actually create a feature request. So we'll come over into issues and GitHub has really great integration for things like project management. And so I can come in and I can create a new issue and I'm gonna say add declined filter capability. Uh, and we'll go ahead and submit that new issue. And I'm gonna go ahead and assign myself. And I can leave comments, I can collaborate with other members of my team, I can do all that right here. And all my issues will show if I go to this issues tab, I can do things like add milestones, labels, that sort of thing. So there's a lot of really cool functionality I can do uh, for collaborating with others inside of GitHub. 
Okay, so we've created this issue. Uh, the developer building this app sees this issue. Let's go back and actually create the fix for this issue uh, and see what it looks like when we wire that up to CI CD with GitHub Actions. Uh, so here we are inside of uh, the Power Apps and Power Platform portal again, and you can see here I've opened the time off request solution. And a solution is just a container for a lot of Power Platform things. So in this case, it's a canvas-based Power App, uh, but I could also put things in here like uh, Power Automate flows. And so in this case, I've gone ahead and added my leave request to this solution. And what we're actually gonna do with GitHub is we're gonna represent the solution in source control. So that's what we just saw when we were over at GitHub, when we were looking at the, the structure for our repository, we saw a solution folder. And so that's just a code representation of what's inside this solution. Uh, you see, I also have different environments that I've created. So I have a development environment. This is where I'm actually uh, making my changes on my app. I have a build environment. This is where I might be testing the changes that I've made. Uh, and then I have a production environment. And this is the environment where the apps live that my end users are actually using with the Power Platform. Uh, so let's go ahead and actually uh, update this leave request app. Uh, so you can see here, uh, we have pending and approved. We don't have declined. Let's go ahead and actually make that change. Uh, so lucky for me, as the developer, it's a super easy change. I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to add filter declined. And you can see that the UI updates, we have declined. I'm going to go ahead and save. And I'll come back over into here and I'll publish these changes as well. And now you can see that all changes are changed and published. So if we come back over to the solution and I refresh this, it says, one second ago, just gonna refresh to make sure. So 13 seconds ago, my leave request tablet app was done. And so uh, we're in our development environment, but what we actually wanna do is we wanna take this, pull this into uh, source control. We are gonna create a new branch with these changes uh, in GitHub. And remember a branch is just a different version of that main folder that can change the changes. Uh, so let's jump over to GitHub. And here I'm on this GitHub Actions tab. Uh, we used issues earlier, we're using GitHub Actions now. Uh, these actions are just things that we can do. They're workflows that I wanna do inside of GitHub. So based off something that happens in this folder, I may wanna trigger some action. So in this case, I may wanna trigger the ability to go and get the latest solution from the Power Platform environment and bring that into uh, GitHub. So let's go ahead and do that now. So we'll go back over to actions and I'm gonna click on this export and branch solution. And we're actually just gonna view this workflow file. And the really cool thing about our GitHub actions integration is that I don't have to really do anything to actually make all of this automation work. Uh, we've gone ahead and defined that for you. Uh, so you can see here, there's different kind of steps and jobs that happen within this, and we'll see what this looks like in a second. But there's not really any code I'm writing here. All I'm doing is specifying some properties. So for instance, my environment URL or my username and my solution name. So there's really not actually much I'm having to do uh, as far as a developer to actually get this integration to work. So let's go back to the GitHub Actions tab. I'm gonna select Export and Branch, and we're gonna go ahead and run this workflow. So I'll click Run Workflow. And you can see that the Export and Branch workflow solution is now showing as queued. We'll click on Export from Dev, and our workflow is gonna start and run through a series of actions that's going to take my solution from the Power Platform, bring that into GitHub by creating a new branch, put those changes in that branch and we'll be able to track all the changes that I'm making to that solution inside of that development branch without affecting that production folder that we had, that main folder inside of GitHub. And so what this does is creates a really nice traceability for all the changes that I'm making with the Power Platform. And as you can see, it's going through and running those steps that I actually had uh, in that workflow definition file that I just showed. And so it's gonna run through each of these and when we're done with this, what we should have is a branch that contains my changes. Okay, so now our GitHub action has completed. So let's return to this code view. And this should be unchanged. You see 22 minutes ago, five hours ago, two hours ago, nothing has actually changed right here. And that's because remember we were exporting to a branch. So you see now when I click on this branches button, I see time off request. And so if I click on this, I can see the most recent change was 31 seconds ago. I can also come over here into commits and I can see all the changes that were made. So if I wanna go back and roll back to a particular change, the really cool thing about putting this into source control is we have that traceability of all the changes I've made. 
And so we can see that this branch is one commit ahead of main. So that just means it's one change ahead of main. So we'll just go ahead and create what's called a pull request. And really a pull request is just a request to pull the changes that are in one branch into that main branch for production. And so I'll go ahead and I'm gonna say fix issue number three, because that's the issue we're fixing. I'm gonna create a pull request. And I'm gonna go ahead and merge this pull request. Great, so our issue has been fixed. We merged the changes. And if I go back over to my code, you'll see that the latest change was one minute ago. So now what we've done is we've taken the changes that were in this branch and brought them into the main branch. And so this might be where I would deploy to an intermediate environment for testing. Uh, but we're just gonna assume that we've already done that because I'm a great developer and we don't need to test things. Uh, so what we now wanna do is deploy this to production. And the really cool thing I can do with GitHub is I can create releases. So I'll come over here and create a release. And it's likely when you're building an app, you're not republishing for every single little change you're making, right? You're coupling feature changes with bug fixes and kind of doing that as a stable release uh, to a user. So you're probably putting many of these changes together uh, and then releasing them to users. So in this case, I'm just gonna version my uh, release 1.01 .01, and I'm gonna say, hey, we added the decline filter capability to my Power App. And so like this might be where I would do like a whole uh, release notes section on what actually happened here, supposing I made multiple changes. So we'll go ahead and hit publish release and something really cool is gonna happen. So you can see here, I have latest release, added decline filter capability to my Power App. I can download this, so I have this really nice traceability. Uh, but if we go over to actions, we'll see that something is actually kicked off. We've kicked off this release solution to prod GitHub action. And so what this is actually gonna do is this is gonna take all of my solution that's represented in GitHub right now in source control it's gonna package that up and it's gonna deploy that to my production environment that we talked about earlier within the Power Platform. And then my users are actually gonna be able to use that production app that I've made with these changes. And so what we've done is we've kind of flowed this application from development to this uh, test environment. And finally, now we're moving into the production environment. Okay, so our release solution to production GitHub action has completed. And if we click over here, we can see that it goes and publishes this to my environment. So if we jump over to my production environment, so you can see I've now switched to my production environment, I'm gonna go ahead and refresh. And you'll see modified 31 seconds ago. I haven't actually gone in and modified this in my production environment, but what we've done is we've taken that app that was in GitHub and pushed it directly into my production environment from GitHub, pretty cool. Uh, so let's go ahead and run this application. And so we'll go ahead and log as an employee and you can see that I have a bug I need to fix. I should file that in GitHub issues. And now we have this decline filter. So that's awesome. So what we did is we just showed the power, no pun intended, of GitHub and the Power Platform together. So first we represented that Power Platform solution that contained my app as a repository in GitHub. This gave us traceability for the changes we were making with change tracking. Next, we logged an issue with our uh, GitHub issues for the app developer. After that, the app developer made changes in the development Power Platform environment without production affecting production users, represented those change in a branch in GitHub using GitHub Actions. We then tested those changes and then we deployed them into production using another GitHub Action. And so this shows just how easy it is to deliver application lifecycle management, traceability with change tracking and CICD with the Power Platform in GitHub. All right, so we just saw how we could use GitHub and the Power Platform to create custom software development lifecycles with source control and CI CD. So that was really awesome. I'm sure you're wondering, how do I do this in my organization? How can I go set this up literally right now? I'm gonna, I'm gonna drop from this call and I'm gonna go set it up literally right now. How do I do it, Pierce? Well, lucky for you, there are some great resources for getting started. We have a walkthrough, a literal step-by-step -step lab that you can go and you can use to set this up for your organization. We also have some great documentation. And these will be referenced at the end of this presentation, as well as you can download them after the presentation in PDF format. So it's always gonna be there. Don't worry about rushing to go and figure out how you can do this. We're gonna have resources for you. You're gonna be able to find them. You're gonna be able to do this today. So one of the things I really like as a pro developer that we showed today is just how all of these worlds are, are melding together, right? Like we talked about APIs and how I can bring APIs into the Power Platform. We talked about custom UI and how we could bring that into the Power Platform. Uh, we talked about uh, data stores and how we can use connectors to connect to things like Azure SQL databases uh, from inside of 
the power platform. So really these walls and this distinction that we've been making uh, over time between this is a low code app and this is a pro code app and I am a low code developer and I'm a pro developer, those walls are breaking down. And that's the really cool thing about what we're doing here with the power platform and fusion development. And so I'm excited to see what you all are gonna do in your organizations with this. Haley? Yeah, thank you all so much for joining us. This has been so much fun telling you about the Power Platform and how you can use it, whether you're a citizen or pro dev uh, and how everyone's working together. So it, it makes me so excited to see all the things that everyone's been building. And I hope everyone's excited to get started and, and start trying these things out right away. As Pierce mentioned, we got a whole bunch of resources at the end of this deck. Uh, so, so get started right now and check them out. Thank you all so much. Thank you.